Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy. On the uh, warning chart here we've got uh, winter storm warning out for the uh, eastern north slope, Brooks Range areas, mostly on the northern slopes there. Eastern Arctic coast, uh, 6 to 12 inches of snow total expected with the heaviest amounts up here along the Brooks Range and then lesser amounts back to the coast there, maybe 2 inches. Uh, winds also gusting uh, as high as 40 miles an hour today along uh, portions of the eastern Arctic coast. Actually, the 40 mile an hour gust was at Kaktovik. It was pretty brisk on the winds with uh, snow all the way back to just east of uh, Barrow. That ended much earlier back over at Barrow. Getting to clear out a little bit back here over the northwest, but this winter storm warning out until 10 p.m. this evening. And by then, uh, the upper level trough and most of the moisture will have shifted off into the Yukon. On the breakup map, uh, no advisories, watches out at all, or uh, warnings, definitely not, with the rivers here uh, open. And uh, some open areas on the Kobuk, Koyukuk rivers and the North Slope uh, rivers up there, Colville, uh, some open all the way out, it looks like uh, on this chart here, and uh, the other two uh, coming along pretty nicely there. So from that, we'll move on to fire danger. Big improvement up here over the interior, and especially the Copper River Basin, due to the precipitation that came in uh, with the front last night and into this morning. In fact, uh, for example, in the Besna, reporting snow all day long, so that really uh, kind of uh, represses or suppresses the fire danger. When you've got snow like that, uh, Northway picking up a quarter of an inch of rain, uh, by contrast, just, uh, oh, two hundredths of an inch over at Fairbanks, but uh, this is the fire danger for fine fuel moistures like, uh, you know, dry grass, leaves, or needles, that type of thing, and that responds quite quickly to uh, any changes in humidity or temperature. So uh, if it dries out again, then those values will get a little more extensive here. Still pretty extreme, so sit in the valley uh, on down across uh, Kenai Peninsula, back to the west here, all the way over into the Whittier area, and of course the Manuska Valley, uh, but um, also high fire dangers, Kodiak Island, Bristol Bay, and portions of the northern southeast coast. For the satellite, here's the front uh, as it pushed down across uh, south central Alaska today, kind of dragging back, or actually south of Kodiak Island, back up toward the Pribilofs here at uh, noontime today on the picture. Uh, real gusty winds as the front passed through Kodiak, uh, maybe as high as 50 miles an hour in the windier areas there. Otherwise, uh, in that 35 to 45 mile an hour range on the gusts and also pretty brisk even, even into the afternoon here back across the Alaska Peninsula with uh, King Cove uh, to Sand Point, False Pass, you're seeing the gusts of around 30 to 35 miles an hour with some uh, rain, fog and drizzle here, mostly on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula there with the front trailing back into the Pribilofs uh, with some fog there and then back into the system way out to the west. And then behind that, the uh, moisture, mostly low clouds and the chillier temperatures here over the Seward Peninsula into Norton Sound and back to the northwest there, but beginning to break out here this afternoon on the lee side of the western mountains there and also back uh, just uh, west of Point Hope and Cape Lisburn, seeing the clearing skies. But uh, a lot of snow going on today over the eastern north slope areas and again as I mentioned the Arctic coast and from Manitouvik on over to uh, about Arctic Village and then uh, showers in areas of uh, rain all the way down into Northway, especially into the Copper River Basin areas 
there with uh, Gulcana picking up 17 hundredths of an inch in the last 24 hours. But again, uh, far greater amounts up toward the northeast there and in the eastern Alaska range, uh, maybe as much as half an inch of liquid water equivalent precipitation falling. Toward, rolling this ahead again, you can see the clouds spreading over the southeast coast. Uh, not much in the way of uh, rainfall yet here for along the North Gulf Coast, but that's going to change with the uh, low pressure developing in the Gulf of Alaska. This moisture will continue to deepen and expand eastward and southward and uh, should see some rain begin the, tonight here along the North Gulf Coast, eventually increase over the Panhandle, clear it out nicely, very nice uh, so good sunshine here over just about all of South Central Alaska into Prince William Sound. Back to the west, you can see some clearing up to the north as well. There were some scattered showers around uh, here over the interior, widely scattered showers. Indian Mountain, uh, for example, had uh, some light rain. And then this front trailing out to the next system out here to the west. And that's going to stay out to the west. It may not even bring any rainfall into the Shimia area. Big area of high pressure building there on this last frame. You can see how these clouds are kind of outlined by the uh, cyclonic or the anti-cyclonic flow and this high is going to build up into the Bering Sea aloft uh, and it's pretty well in there over the surface as it is with the front coming back something like this today and the rain down to the south mostly to the west of Shimia but a lot of low clouds and fog out over the Bering Sea with marginal VFR areas of IFR and uh, especially along the uh, front here the IFR right down to the Alaska Peninsula breaking out of uh, those northwest winds there across Kodiak Island and still quite dry, quite dry conditions here over all of south central Alaska and uh, then the scattered showers here over the interior. Thunderstorms there over the eastern Alaska range also broke out this afternoon as well as northwest Canada and then the uh, snow up to the north and uh, kind of a frontal system here, but again, not a lot of moisture. Well, there was a narrow band of rain extending off the coast there up across Elfin Cove, but to the west of Haines. And tonight, uh, low pressure in the Gulf now. Look for rain to increase all along the Panhandle and back to Yakutat over to about Cordova, on up into the uh, Wrangell Mountains and then mixing with snow here over the northern areas. Mixed rain and snow showers scattered around the uh, eastern interior and that winter storm morning again ends at about 10 p.m. By that time, all the heavier snow will be off into Canada and just some leftover flurries and showers of the west, but uh, clear skies over the uh, far western areas, mostly clear down over the, across the uh, southwest interior, Cusicum Valley, all the way out to the delta there, and uh, Togiak, Dillingham, King Salmon should be clear tonight, but the low clouds on the Bering Sea side of the peninsula with areas of dense fog as well here, all the way down possibly into Unalaska, the Pribilofs, Look for IFR to occasional low IFR conditions and St. Lawrence Island. Uh, not too bad there on the southern coast of the Seward Peninsula, but some clouds hanging back there. Next system up here to the northwest, we'll see, uh, comes down to just off the coast here tomorrow afternoon at this time with the first high kind of retreating off to the east there. Some leftover moisture, especially early in the day, could keep some flurries and fog over the eastern Arctic coast, but uh, clearing out back to the west, mostly sunny in the Koyukuk Valley, and then some scattered showers around the, uh, oh, mostly along the Alaska range and in over the mountainous areas. There'll be some clearing in here as well. The main low now and upper trough uh, sliding down into the Gulf of Alaska with uh, moisture in that front now pushing right up to the coast there. It's gonna be more of a rain producer than wind producer here for the Panhandle. Heaviest amounts from about Sitka up to Yakutat, back toward Cordova where it ends. Variably cloudy over Prince William Sound with less wind there. Uh, places like Seward, gonna hang on to the north winds but not quite seeing those gusts to 35 miles an hour you saw today. Still breezy but not as bad there for Kodiak. And no change out here in the west. Tremendous area of high pressure holding uh, not only through Monday, we'll see through Tuesday as well. That's going to allow this front here to get pushed southeastward, east-southeastward, by another high back to the west there. So that'll spread some moisture all the way down to the Yukon Delta coast uh, in the form of uh, drizzle, rain, or fog. And that'll extend back up uh, toward the uh, Kotzebue area, Kivalina, or it could be a mixture of rain or snow, mostly in the form of snow up there in the colder air on the north slope up to the coast with uh, clearing out conditions, a very nice VFR to mostly sunny day 
from about uh, New Exit eastward to Kaktovik. Sunshine in Tanana Valley, dry conditions. That'll extend southward again. Another day of sunshine for South Central Alaska, the Kenai Peninsula areas. Then pick up some clouds, uh, but no rain for Prince William Sound and some isolated afternoon showers here over the eastern mountains of the Alaska Range and Copper River Basin. Big upper trough now down over the Gulf of Alaska and that extends right up across the pan now. So it'll be numerous showers, some of those on the heavy side at times uh, across all of the southeast coast there, uh, getting a little more drier condition back uh, west of Yakutat. And uh, again, for temperatures today, 48 degrees at Elfin Cove this afternoon, but wrangle up to 61. Cloak, 55 degrees. Skagway at 59, while Cordova was at 56. 44 there at Gulcana, and a 67 there over at Seward uh, with the north winds. That was, uh, looks to be the warmest location in the state today, at least on this chart. 60 degrees at Kenai, 56 at Homer, Anchorage up to 61, and a 56 at Talkeetna. And uh, looking at the Alaska Peninsula here, mostly in the 40s, even the Aleutians, lower to mid 40s out to the west, same thing for the Pribloffs, 30s along the coast, all the way up to uh, Nome, but uh, Unalakli came in right at the freeze point, only 27 this afternoon at uh, Gamble and Savunga. And up over the interior, uh, temperatures were in the 30s and 40s, but the Arctic Coast North Slope areas were in the 20s. And lows for tonight in the teens up there, hanging in the lower 20s along the Arctic Coast, uh, 20 to 25 in that range, and mostly in the 20s here, back to the west of St. Lawrence Island. And in the 30s to lower 40s over southern Alaska, upper 40s for the Panhandle, and near 40 for the Alaska Peninsula. Then for the highs tomorrow, uh, 20s to lower 30s here for the North Slope and the Arctic coastal areas. And then south of the Brooks Range, upper 40s to mid 50s, uh, near 60 here in the Susitna Valley, maybe the lower 60s. And that looks to be the uh, warmest locations in Alaska tomorrow, right there in the Susitna Valley, Wasilla, on up to uh, Squintna, Talkeetna, Trapper Creek areas. And upper 50s for the Copper River Basin, mid 50s for the Panhandle, and the cool 40s here out over the Aleutians, uh, Macoriak, forecast high 37, and about the same for St. Lawrence Island. Flying weather, marginal VFR, fairways back to the west here, but the Pribilofs areas of IFR, back down the Aleutians, uh, marginal to IFR conditions with the VFR over Bristol Bay, narrow band of I marginal VFR along the Alaska Peninsula, and also possibly here along the Alaska Range on the north slopes there, with IFR developing and gradually increasing throughout the day along the southeast coast over to about Cordova. Anatuvik, VFR, Adigan, same forecast. Lake Clark and Merrill, good VFR tomorrow as well for rainy. Windy, possible marginal VFR, but uh, VFR conditions to the south entrance and down south of that. Same thing for Isabel, IFR possible on the northern entrance, otherwise marginal and the uh, lowest conditions will be from the pass to the north entrance here for Mentasta. For Tanita, should be VFR, either approach, same forecast reported, Shokut and White, marginal VFR. Freezing levels here showing the uh, colder air now, 2,000 feet right down to the north Gulf Coast uh, as that upper trough begins to slide into the Gulf of Alaska. Warmer conditions under the upper high pressure building over the Bering Sea with freezing levels about 6,000 feet warmer out there than they will be here along the coast. Icing threats, this area way out to the west and is going to stay there. Uh, some of this may begin to slide eastward uh, tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night, but areas of uh, icing 4 to 12,000 feet here of the light to isolated moderate variety along the southeast coast. And the upper low uh, today up over the north slope bringing the snow up there. That's going to drop southward to about this position uh, midday tomorrow and the northerly winds back over the west supporting those gusty surface winds out that way down across Kodiak and then increasing west-southwest flow as this drops into the Gulf that southwesterly flow will increase and so will the rainfall and clouds on that area. For 9,000 feet southwesterly, 30 to 35 knots are coming into the central and southern southeast coast, but northerly 25 to 30 through this area. Lighter winds under that huge area, high pressure out over the Bering Sea. Winds becoming quite light up here over the North Slope and Arctic coast. And for the 3,000 foot winds, same pattern here. Strongest 
right across the Kenai Peninsula into the Barren Islands. Good southwesterlies uh, developing there for the southwest coast. Turbulence, occasional moderate chop, north Gulf Coast, and again, especially early in the day here, Kodiak Island, right up along the Alaska Peninsula, and, uh, or the Alaska Range, all the way over to the east side as well. And after the break, I'll be back to look at the marine forecasts. Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm Jim Peronto. Floods can occur in Alaska any time of the year. They can be triggered by heavy rains, ice jams, and storm surges. But there's another event that occurs in Alaska which can cause significant flooding and property damage. It's called a glacier outburst flood or yokelup. This type of flood is caused by a release of a glacier dammed lake. Today in the studio, I have Larry Runquist, who is the Service Coordination Hydrologist at the Alaska Pacific River Forecast Center, and he's going to talk to us about this interesting event. Welcome to the studio, Larry. Thank you, Jim. Let's first start with the definition of a glacier dammed lake. What is it? Okay, a uh, glacier dammed lake is pretty much as it says. It's a, a lake that forms because a glacier has blocked off a um, valley or an area where f uh, water would normally flow and so it creates a, a lake, it dams up a lake. And why are these so important uh, in Alaska? Why should we know about these? Well, these lakes, uh, once they fill, they actually do release um, on a, on a uh, regular basis and so the, the emptying of a lake can be a significant uh, uh, source of flooding doesn't have to be, but it can be a, a significant flood. And how many of these glacier dam lakes do we have in Alaska? Uh, there's hundreds of lakes. Uh, back wow. in 1971, USGS published a uh, uh, study. They identified 750 lakes at that time. A more recent study by a, uh, an APU student um, had came up with similar number, although some of the old lakes disappeared and new lakes have formed since since that time. Can you talk about the lakes and when they drain and go into maybe more details on how that process occurs? Yeah, the, the lakes basically, again, they, they drain on a, on a regular basis. When they get to a full point, um, then they, they empty uh, and, and the, the release mechanism can be either subglacial or a lateral release. Uh, subglacial is where it where the lake actually connects into the glacier tunnels below the lake and and such releases it has to grow the tunnel over time so so it's it takes a little longer for the lake to release as a result. Uh, lateral release can be much quicker because it just has to cut a notch through the the end of the glacier and and uh, and then can as a result have a pretty fast release downstream. And when these glacier dammed lakes release, flash flooding can occur. Am I, am I, am I, is that a correct statement? Uh, it it wouldn't be technically flash flooding uh, from the standpoint of from the initial time that the release starts to to go. It it can be. Um, Maybe in a lateral release, it, it may be on the order of a day or something before it starts to really pick up to be a flooding situation. But in a subglacial release, it may go for days before it's even noticed downriver. Um, so it really isn't uh, flashy in the sense of a thunderstorm flash flood. What are some of the uh, significant glacier dam lakes that you, you see every year that you're monitoring? I'm thinking of one, Ski Lack. I mean, we get these, you know, reports from Ski Lack Lake and when that lake releases. Right. Of, of the hundreds of lakes that are in the mountains in Alaska, in South Central and Southeast Alaska, uh, it's a pretty small percent of those that actually drain through populated areas and thus become potential flood threats and, and uh, very very highly used river, the Kenai River has has several glacier dam lakes in them, the two largest of which being one on Snow Glacier and one on Ski Lack Glacier. And and those 
two lakes uh, uh, do drain on a on a periodic basis every two to three years, and and so it, because of the potential for a pretty big slug of water coming down the Kenai, those are pretty closely monitored uh, through aerial reconnaissance, uh, uh, just periodically check to see how full the lake is. And once it gets to a pretty full level, then uh, we, we watch it much closer and, and sort of assess the downstream conditions at that time. And that's a good segue to the next question because I was wondering how you monitor these lakes. So you, you have pilots that are monitoring these lakes? Right, yeah. We, we use either civil air t patrol or we have used private pilots as well at times to, um, to just overfly the lakes, take p pictures uh, uh, for us to, to evaluate um, afterwards. And, uh, and that's a pretty, pretty effective way to, to monitor. It's pretty, pretty tough to keep automated equipment going in that harsh terrain. Most of these lakes are, are up in, in uh, higher elevations, 3,000 foot elevation or, or so, and, and it's just harsh environment to try to keep automated gauges going. And these events are not just unique to Alaska, right? I mean, these are, these are occurring around the world in similar types of climate. Right, any, any uh, areas that have glaciers in them, um, can can have these lakes uh, forming and, and releasing and, and that's where the the term Yokelop is an Icelandic term but the I Icelandic uh, uh, area has a lot of glaciers and they've had these major outbursts uh, um, from these lakes draining. Where can people go to get this information if, if, if there's a, a, a flooding event occurring because of a glacial dam release What's the best place for, for them to go to to get that information? Well, we would be issuing, if there is a, a flooding associated with it, we would be issuing, the Weather Service would issue flood warnings and, and just explain in the flood warning what the source is. Uh, we do have on the, on the River Forecast Center page of the Weather Service, we have more information about Glacier Dam Lakes and, and in particular the ones we know quite a bit about. Okay, and that website is aprfc.arh.noaa.gov. Did I get that right? Correct. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for coming in today, Larry, and talking to us about this interesting, unique event. Thank you for having me. I'll have you back another time, I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> and thank you for joining us here on Alaska Weather Facts. Until next time. Welcome back. Uh, look for south winds, 20 to 25 knots out along the coast. A little lighter over the inside waters, mostly from its southeasterly direction. Then for Tuesday, lighter winds here along the coast. Still could get up to around 20 knots on the south coast, as well as the southern inner channels. Then uh, 10 to 15 knots, but Lynn Canal possibly up to 25 knots. Then for uh, the Barrens, uh, here, right through this area, still some gales tomorrow. Early in the day, into the afternoon, winds coming down to 20 to 30 knots here across Kodiak Island. And uh, small craft advisories for the Cook Inlet area, 15 knot winds for Prince William Sound, and much lighter through this area than North Gulf Coast. Then for uh, Tuesday, about the same on the wind speeds here, north or the wind directions, northwesterly but a lot less on the wind speeds now down to the 10 to 15 knot range uh, just about everywhere. Could be a band of 20 knot winds here coming into the central Gulf Coast. For Brist Bristol Bay, northwest 20 and uh, higher gusts here out of the northern passes again tonight into at least uh, midday tomorrow then uh, coming down gradually from west to east. And those winds probably hanging on to 20 knots there, Sitkanak over to about Chignik, but 15 knot winds for the peninsula, 10 knots up around Bristol Bay. For the eastern Aleutians, north to northeast, 15 to 20 knots tomorrow, more of an easterly direction from Atka to Adak, southeast, up to 25 possibly there uh, for a short period of time. That's going to be way out to the western end of that uh, marine zone. And then again, Tomorrow night, that'll drop off. You're down to 15 knots tomorrow night through Tuesday there. Even lighter off to the west, uh, 
barely a breeze here for the central Aleutians, 10 to 15 knots. So laying down pretty good out here over the Aleutians, again with all the high pressure up over the Bering Sea. Northeasterlies at about 15 for the Fox Islands. Light winds for the Pribilofs, uh, south of Nunavak Island. Look for some 20 knot winds tomorrow, otherwise 15 from the west northwest. And northwesterlies along the coast from St. Lawrence Island at about 10 knots to 20 knots here south of Nunavak Island. Light winds again for the Pribilofs, west at 15 for St. Matthew Island. The Arctic coast, uh, pretty light there on the east side. And uh, 25 to 20 to 25 knot winds here on the west side, mostly from the south dropping off to 15 knots down uh, as you get in toward the uh, Chukchi Sea. And then those will swing around again, another frontal system dropping into the interior, pushing eastward. There won't be a lot of prefrontal winds with that. It'll be mostly a increase behind the front from the northwest up to 20 knots on the western and central coast. Tonight again, uh, upper level low pressure drops in over the Gulf of Alaska. That's going to cause this surface low to deepen and strengthen. And as southwest flow increases, that'll deepen the moisture layer to spread rain in, well, from the southern areas, that'll be the least chance of rain to the greatest chance up toward Elfin Cove, Yakutat, over to Cordova. Rain and snow showers here, depending on your elevation over the interior, mostly snow up there to the north of that winter storm warning, again, out until 10 p.m for six to 12 inches total accumulation of the Burks Range, but that'll pull off after 10 p.m. Most of the moisture will be over into Canada. Clearing out to the west, nothing but high pressure here over the Bering Sea, and that's gonna keep that next storm well out to the west there. In fact, that front really weakening uh, during the day tomorrow. High pressure locked in there just west of the Pribloffs. That'll hold again through Tuesday, rain for the Panhandle. Have a great evening, thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service.